El Nino occurs approximately every two to seven years. The event is the warming of the Pacific equatorial ocean waters to at least one half degree Celsius above normal for three consecutive months. On this graphic, we can see moisture, or the lack thereof. Gray with multicolored convection along the equator, and then the lack of moisture with an orange-red hue. And where we see that lack of moisture, that might be air going down, but it is dry. This image was taken during the developing 2015-2016 El Nino. And you know, the weather patterns were already changing. This band right along the, the southern part of the image here, that's, uh, that's the equatorial regions. And really, the equator's right here. And you, see, and you see all this convection stuff has moved north of the equator. And we see some of this moisture being pulled into the upper airflow. So what happens is this goes along, all this moisture, all this action down south here, a lot of it gets pulled up into storm systems to the north that slam into parts of the western parts of the United States. Now this graphic is the wide view of the waters of the Pacific Ocean, the equatorial areas mainly. We can easily observe above normal water temperatures, which we call anomalies. How far is it above normal? Sometimes it's below normal. It's a La Nina then, but we're talking El Nino. The oval-shaped area on this graphic is the primary zone where we watch for the creation of El Nino. El Nino usually shows up first in the Western Pacific, way out here, but it gradually then spreads eastward. And I can tell you right now, this is very warm in here along the equator and with this particular graphic time. But also note the warmer than normal conditions we have elsewhere. We have them along the west coast out here and also into the North Pacific. El Nino is a part of a much larger feature, commonly called El Nino Southern Oscillation, ENSO. It's a huge, huge area and it's measured by what we call the SOI, this, this Southern Oscillation Index. And really that index may be the first indicator of, a, of an El Nino and it has to do with measuring the water level. Has it, is it going up, going down? So therefore, what are the pressures over the various areas? So really, we look at the difference in surface air pressure between Tahiti and Darwin. Persistent higher surface air pressures at Darwin, Australia, along with a corresponding lower surface air pressure at Tahiti, may point to an El Nino event developing. Conversely, when the air pressure pattern is reversed, then we may have a La Nina, which is the coolie. Here we're looking at a vertical cross section of the ocean along the equator. We can see a large area of warmer than normal water moving eastward. It's a part of the ocean atmosphere system trying to correct the energy balance, shoving the heat to the east. Now look at this. On the left, we're viewing August 6, 1997. And and on the right, we're looking at August 5th, 2015. They look pretty similar. That's the globe. And what we have here are sea level anomalies. Now the red, white zones down along the equator, that indicates where the level of the ocean is up. It means pressures are lower. So when we look at these, this is 97. This was uh, 2015 leading to 2016. And really, it's a little bit stronger. Now this one, the 1997 was the strongest El Nino ever. Had more impact on us than any other El Nino. So. Can we make that giant jump and say, we have a stronger one at this point, and so we're going to have a worse one, the worst ever? It's, it's difficult to make that jump. Later on, you'll see that they vary. They may be close to the same intensity, but the results uh, vary considerably. So El Nino creates lower than normal surface pressures near the equator, and that allows, once again, the ocean surface to rise vertically. Remember the hurricane, lower pressure, the surface comes up. Consider a tropical disturbance with a central pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. That is the weight of the atmosphere above a certain point. If the storm intensifies, let's say the you know, hurricane's intensifying, whatever it is, a tropical disturbance is intensifying and it drops an inch to 28.92, there's less pressure on the water, less pressure. So what happens? The surface of the ocean rises. It's, it's just really quite amazing. For one, one inch of mercury represents one foot of rise in the ocean. 